Hello everybody. In this video, we are going to change our feed page and actually be showing what uh, the post should be looked like and the profile information to the left. The idea that I have is actually separate the screen, probably like in a 2 to 10 ratio or something like this here. We have the user profile information on the left and on the right we we'll have on the top the post a uh, new comment and uh, the comment bit at the bottom so let's actually start working with this so we have our feed application or feed view file that's pretty more using the user display and the user is getting from the store so let's keep it this computer property let's leave it there but let's remove this section so let's actually do a container uh, in this container we have a row remember this information is part of the beautify documentation for how the grid system works so we we can have rows and inside the rows we have actually different columns but the rows need to be inside actually a container so then we specify a, a column and before we continue we say that this column is going to take two places and then we have another big column We are not specifying anything, so we will take in the rest of this page. Uh, let's actually put like something like this really quick. So I'm putting a head, uh, heading, level one, hello, another one, another column there. Let's see if this gets rendered. Let me log into the application. There you go. So it's taking the two spaces and the rest. To verify that this is doing what it's supposed to, we can always specify the class with a specific color and beautify, we make different changes. So we're looking that it's actually working. Perfect. And if we change this one to class blue, there you go. So we have the two columns, one taking two spaces and the other taking the rest. Perfect, this is what it is. So what I want to create now is finding or put the user information in this size. So let me actually remove this one. We don't need it for now. Let's remove the colors. We also need those one right now. So in the column for sizing two, I want to create let's say some kind of container like a card but empty so one pretty cool thing that this have actually is something called sheet there you go and I see the simple banner or simple things that we can have to encapsulate something it's like a card but it's a little more primitive without the capability of the card it is actually what I want so let me create um, B sheet let's save it let's put some kind of content Okay, there is my sheet, but I actually want transparent. So let's see if this works. I save. Perfect. So this is pretty much like a, what can I say? It's like a dip right now, what, I, what I'm doing right now. So in this sheet, I will have 
another container. So it's like having a layout inside this, and that will have a row, of course. And in that row, a column. This column will have a specific class of text center. And let's start doing some elements. Let's do uh, the avatar. Avatar, there you go. Let's save it. In the Unity, then we go to the avatar documentation. So, avatar is pretty much like a show with something like this. We have an image. Um, we can have a rounder or square. Is what I need? We need something like this. The profile card, there are different examples of how to use the avatar. So this is pretty much what I need. And for that, we can specify the sizing and the colors of the avatar. Cool. So in this case, I need to specify the, the height or probably it's going to be better yes, the size the size property so you know what, let's actually keep it like this and let's do an image and this image we have a source And the source is going to be user dot photo URL, and this one this is binded because we are specifying a value. Let's refresh. Oh, I need to log in again. There you go. Where the image came, this actually came from my Google account. So my user properties have a photo URL that actually have the URL for the image and we need to bind it. That's why we are able to put it there, but probably it's a little bit small. That's why I want to change my size of the avatar. Let's say to 120. Better. We will do 140. Uh, probably it's too big, let's leave it as 20. Yeah, I like it. So let me log out actually. Let me test my other account. Hmm, we're not doing it. Because we're supposed to set the photo URL to the public user. So you can actually go to user.png. Oh, probably because of that. We're supposed to get rid of this image that is in the here. Mm. So let me log in again. It's not doing it. Let's check, inspect the element. We're going to see the view. Go to view X and we load the state. Let's see what photo URL we have. Oh, we don't have photo URL. That's why it's not working. Hmm. Go to the console. Image slot fail. So. Hmm. Let 
let's actually look for something view get base url no, how to set no how to get uh, um, okay we can use the road element make probably Let's do something different right now, guys. Um, we have the avatar there. We leave it like that. And let's do a next one. And let's put a router element. Let's see what is it print. It's not printing anything. Route. No. Okay, look at this. It's actually getting on the finite user. That means, let me go back, let me remove this route. That means if we go to the register, actually to the store, and we register, here you go, router options base is now being set up. This is getting undefined and it's saving like that. As you can see, undefined and user PNG. Oh my god. That means this, this is getting undefined plus this information. So this is something that we need to fix. And we can add it. You know what? Let's do. Process dot amp dot base underscore URL. And we need to create the base URL in our environmental file. So in my case, in this right now, I will add just this section. I will not show it here on the screen because of course for security reasons. So let me go off screen and let me open my file. <laughs> I open it here, okay. So what we need to do is view underscore app underscore base underscore URL equal and the URL that we put it. Save it, close it, and we put it like this. Perfect. We save this too. Let me stop the, actually let me show you this. I have the server here. Let me stop it. I start it over because we actually changed the environmental file. We go to the first. Firebase console. Let me remove this user. 
and let me add it again. Kind of. There you go. And now we have the base URL. So this is when we sign up with the user and when we will sign up with Google, you're going to get the user account. Perfect. We have a typo over there. Texas College. But so Texas College. It was missing a T there. There you go. Excellent. So now that we have that, let's actually have a simple paragraph that would show the user that display name if I remember correctly uh, probably and let's have another one user email there you go, I need to refresh it Excellent. So I'm getting the username, I'm getting the email. Let's actually make this look a little bit better. So the name, we have a class, and let's add it as title. Let's add a little margin on the top because this is like too close margin top zero sorry one and let's remove the, the bottom one so margin bottom zero that get up perfect and this is probably it. we can do something better subtitle one Headline is too big. Yeah, the headline is too big. So, title. Uh, subtitle one, I believe, is the other one. No, it's subtitle actually. Yeah, leave it like that. Um, after that, what I want is to have like some kind of button. So, let's create actually but and this code will say my profile and when you click it we're supposed to go to the prof my profile pretty much what we need and let's modify the button a little bit let's put it like a class uh, let's do a blue item 2 for example Get it like that, perfect. You can actually specify the dark element to get it like this. Uh, could work. And before my profile, we actually put an icon. The icon. And this is going to be class left and what this means we can do some like connect like MDI user no it's not user it's account um, actually it's not class it's just the word left. Mm. 
Didn't like it. The VI call one. And why? If I remove account, more likely I have a typo somewhere. Let's look for that. Give it the word account. There you go. There you go. MDI. There you go. Okay, that was weird. It was not reflecting the changes. I need to restart. So how can I get this icon and how I knew that it's colored like this? Well, we need to go to MDI icons. And here's the list. You wait to be Humbled, you open any icon that you like, let's say that, that's where the cake. It's called cake barrier. So just copy that. And what I need to do is pre-append with MDI dash and then the name of the icon. If we do that, we send it later. Cool. Actually, let's or look for something or you can look for something here when you can specify like user you get like a bunch of icon there um, let's actually have the one account details so instead of cape area account details and that make my icon be like that doesn't look fine leave it like an account and uh, it's it so there is where you get the icons and the names so perfect i believe we have this section very much done now what i want to do for the other column i want to start with a text area when we can actually um publish a comment and um, for that Let's actually create that element. So, as you can see here, we can actually take all this logic from Bishit copy. I go to components, I create a new file, and it's called user info.view. And we specify the V template, pretty much. And we just copy this part. Of course, because I the script, we're going to call it uh, user info. There you go. And because of that, now in my feed, I can import from import in user info from let's say add remember that is um uh, to source component but as user info and here we're gonna call something called components and we use the user info so we're importing that element 
Niet. Wat een lekker combo weer dit. User info. Now that we have it, we can now remove all the visit and use user info. Stop closing. If we save, this should work. And it's not. Um, oh, it doesn't know for the user. So now we can actually move the computed element, we don't need it here, and move it to the component user info. I'll put it there. Excellent. So we separate the logic for this element and create a component with this element here. That means that our feed is getting a little bit cleaner. We go in this column, we just post in the user info. Excellent. And we're going to do something really similar with the publish. Let's create a publish element. So let's import it first. And let's self put it here. Okay. It doesn't exist right now, so we need to create it. Publish that view. Um, be base, and we do an H one. Hello. There you go. So now we create the publish element that is going to be inside the, the second column, and this publish element. What we'll have is uh, actually with I think we need to put like a card. Let's do a B card. And from this card we have a form. Um, And let's create a B model because every form needs to be tied up to see if it's actually valid or not. And let's create to an element called valid. And let's put the script tag here. Name publish. And that uh, let's create the valid and um, by default it's going to be false okay so now we can have actually our bit text area let see how it looks like perfect so we need this Excellent. Um, in this one, what we're going to do? Let's actually create text to publish. By default, it's nothing. And we bind this to text to publish. And we not only bind it, we just, as we can see here, I'll get me out every day. It's resizable. I don't want that. So let me put, there's a property called no resize. Or is it staying there supposed to? Excellent. Um, uh, 
And we mentioned that we actually wanted to have a counter for 32-7 characters. Yes. Um, let's put a label. What do you want to publish today? I don't like it how it looks like all the way across. What happened? Oh, because I'm inside a card. After the form, we actually need to send the card tag and put the text area inside that. And then the card tag, we can create a container. Let's see and put the text area inside the container. There you go. Now we have that little padding around it. Excellent. And let's create some rules. Um, let's put it like this. And the rules need to be binded actually. And let's create the publisher element. And the publisher, I already have it typed it somewhere else, so let me just put it there. Don't worry, the code is going to be published in order to, to get it. So we have two rules. We need to specify that the value needs to exist. If you don't understand this, don't worry. This pretty much means that the text needs to be published, is required. And this pretty much is checking the length and it's saying that it's below or equal to 337. Excellent. So now it will specify some kind of content. And we get over. We get a validation, max this kind of characters, and text to publish is required. Excellent, it's what I wanted. But let's spice it a little bit more. And let's actually, you know what, let's actually put an emoji picker. So let's see how the text area com element works. So the traditional text area, and we can append an icon, or we can let me go here uh, prepend an icon and that's actually show it more likely here I want to prepare the icon and I want that icon like this and then you click it and I say much bigger so let's actually do that so for that I will rely in a emoji view mart Mark view, sorry, almost. And this is pretty much uh, view component that actually have an emoji later. Cool. So we just copy this element, the name. We add it to the application, yarn add emoji mark view. Um, we imported a speak picker. Let's say here we import the the element, and of course because we are importing here it doesn't say it, but we are importing a component, an element. Of course we need to enable it. So let's actually. 
after the data the component uh, let's put the picker there and if we put after the text area the picker what does it do? there you go this is pretty much this is, my, this is what we wanted but we need to make it look a little bit what can I say? Mm, better so let's go back here um, we can actually do something like this let me see my note Um, actually we can actually create like a button well this first we know that we can import to the picker let's remove it for now let's add the prepend icon here so let's look for an emoji I uh, don't like it. Yeah, I like this more. Emory icon. Yeah, let's do that one. Okay. So let's add this one as a prepend. So let's look for the prepend information. There you go. So we have prepared icon and the name of the icon. Okay. That could work, but we can actually have a better way to do it. Because we want, let's see. We have a slot. Excellent. Prepend Einer. Now that means that we can be more, how can I say it? Hmm. More dynamic, it will well, we can put it there. So, let me actually show you that. So, inside the text area, we can actually determine another template element. This template element is actually a B slot. For prepend either, and whatever you put in here, it's going to be render as a prepend either, as you can see. So you can actually have something as complex, let's say, if import user info from add components user info um, put that one over here this is just an example mm. and we can actually put it here so we can well, full blown component as a, like an icon for this, right? So we can be creative. And what I actually want, let me remove that user info. What I really want is, an, is a button. So let's put a simple B button. And this button will have a B icon. We're going to be the MDI Emory icon, I believe. Emory Emoricon. There you go. Let's remove. Let's say that this actually is an icon. 
there you go so it's like a button there um, let's do something about it whenever we click it and we stop it that means that we can't click it just once we are going to do on the line show picker equal true that means that we need to create the element show picker that's going to be false by false and whenever we click this we should be changing the show picker to true Uh, to show the picker actually I want to create a dialog so after that button let's create it it's still inside the template inside the text area let's create a dialog that we have the view model of show picker So what this is going to be doing? Well, probably with refresh. As you can see, what did happen? Did it get like something going to be overlaid? So that means that inside the dialog, we can actually show the picker. Now we need to handle the width. So I know that because trial and error, my picker sizing is 340. So that means my dialog is going to have a max width of 340. And actually it should be in here. There you go. That means Let me restart. Mm. Okay, the typo here. There you go. I don't like this, so let me actually change that. When I have something already here so the cool thing is we can change the title and the emoji so something like this picture emoji and now we need to do something about it when we click it I want to insert it here so pretty much what we're going to do is whenever we select we're going to execute the add emoji function and or method actually and the method is going to be here and what I want pretty much is add emoji and we are going to send the emoji by itself Right, like because we already buying text to publish, so we take in the text publish and we concatenate at the end the native emoji. What does mean? So we select something, get inserted. Perfect, this is what we needed, right. Actually, I like this, so let's leave it like that. Um, well, I think it's everything that we need for now. Actually, not. We are still missing the button for publishing. 
So let go back here after the text. Let's do a big card action. Um, let's do a spacer. A, a big spacer, what it does is pretty much given space. The spacer, or let me self close in it. And we'll create a button. button Polish is right there but it's not where I supposed to be oh this is actions with plural Fresh. There you go. It's there. Let's just change the color of that button. To success. Oh my god, it's taking forever to update. Uh, there you go. Yeah, I think so. So we have pretty much ever, almost everything here. The only things that we need to add now is the validation. So this button actually is going to be type submit. And the form, what we're going to do is going to be add submit. We are going to prevent the default behavior and we are going to run the method publish. Let's add something extra here. Let's add a reference that the form is called publish form. Okay, but I'm doing that because in my method. Let me just copy and paste it. I will create my publish element that will verify if my form is valid because we just make the validations, right? We console log the text and we reset the, the form. Excellent. So that means we go to the console, you publish. It gets validated, but if I put something there, it's sent it to the console and clear up. If I try again, it validates and told me, yeah, I need to put something in order to be posted. If I put something, a lot of times, so let's put something several times, and try to publish. It's still failing because we pass out the bad characters. In this case, there you go. So I believe this is the component that we need. We have the emoji picker. We can put something there. Hmm. Text to publish is in the file. To square. Render, we push it, we try again. Mm. Text to publish is on the file. He doesn't like it. So let's actually do 
this text to publish equal to nothing probably or let's say we put an emoji we publish we put an emoji again hmm. it's getting issues you know so more likely because we are resetting the form then we remove that let's try we publish perfect then we try again there you go yeah we were setting the form and that was making a lot of complications but we need to reset it somehow hmm. Let's keep the reset part just in case. Yeah, I don't know. It's working after I. Hmm. Okay, so probably can put this after I reset. Let me check. I publish. Put it in. It's working. Excellent. Yes. So I need to reset the text to publish after I actually reset the form. That made it work. Cool. So we have this component ready. And I believe we can move on. Um, I will leave this video like this. In the next one, we are going to create um, the components. Uh, for the post already posted pretty much happy calling everybody